What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Lex P. And it's your girl, Dre Nicole. And you are tuned in to another episode of Poor Minds. Where a drunk mind speaks sober thought. We got a guest today. We got a guest today. Hey. So let me just say this, because I am super excited. Because first of all, we finally have a guest who voice deeper than mine. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I ain't got the deepest voice on the couch right now. I feel like my voice is deeper than yours. Your voice is not deeper than mine. I think it is. Anyways, we got Trey the Truman of High. I'm so excited because this has been a long time coming. I appreciate it. We've that. been ooh, I pre- ooh, we've been <laughs> having a ball. You has a woman ever like they be telling you your voice sexy all the time? All the time. I know mm-hmm. that's right. I believe it. I can tell you use your voice to get out of trouble, huh? I don't even talk much. You don't talk much? <laughs> no. Well, oh, you finna talk today. <laughs> okay. So, let us know, you know, because we have a lot of younger listeners. So, mm-hmm. give us, you know, a little background, backstory about who Trey is. Oh. I don't know about a little one, but... Yeah. Uh, you can give us the long version. You can give us the long version. We got time. <laughs> we got some time. I don't know. You know, it's just different aspects to me. You know, a lot of people know me from the music, you know, being in the game for over 20 years. Mm-hmm. Of course, in Houston, they just know me from the streets in general. Mm-hmm. Um, and now, within the last decade, everybody know me as being one of the hometown heroes, saving people and other stuff. When, mm-hmm. It's just all different walks. I mean, whatever whatever float they boat for what they like, I'm not. Yeah, you. that's what I was going to say. I feel like you do a lot of philanthropy. Can you Ooh, talk about that? That's a good done? word now. Go ahead. So, I'll be reading. I don't really <laughs> know. A lot of people label it that, man. But mm-hmm. um, I've been getting awards for helping people since 97, 98. Mm-hmm. So um, I don't know. I think that's just naturally in my heart. I mean, mm-hmm. just being there for somebody in need. That's just naturally what I do. Right. Yeah. That's good. But I want you to talk about how important that is because I do feel like sometimes people lose that. Mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of times when people make it and they start making money, they just start kind of like feeling themselves. And that goes into the topic we're going to talk about later. But talk about like why it's important for you to be like the face of that because I think a lot of times when people see rappers, they feel like they're supposed to be a certain type of way. Like you're supposed to be hard. Oh. and But you actually, you be outside yeah, giving helping. back and doing things like... Be really in the field giving back to the community. So talk mm-hmm. about how important that is for especially rappers. Well, I'm going to say important for me because what I won't do is say important for rappers because I feel like, man, everybody has the mentality that everybody has to do different things. And what I came to realize is I can't expect me out of them. Mm-hmm. I can't necessarily even fault them because they don't want to. That's their business, you know. But right. um, for me... It's just important to do that because, I mean, for me to get to where I am, I had to have the support of the people. Right. So if I if, if they helped grow me and they supported me through uh, my hiccups and everything that I, I've had from wins and losses, why not be there for them, you know, mm-hmm. and just try and... I use everything I do just to motivate others who are similar to me or, or plant that seed to show them what can be done. Right. But when I do it, I do it from a genuine place. So the thing is, when you go to saying what other entertainers, other rappers, or other people should do, it's like, is for me, is it, am I telling them to do that more for myself? Because that's just what I would do. Right. Because I don't think nobody necessarily required to 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 do much for nobody. You right. Know? right. They don't make it right, but let's just be real about the situation, you know. Let me ask you this, too, because I'm glad you brought that up about, like, other rappers and doing things and not making them do it. Because this is something I know a lot of things that you have done for people Mm -hmm. that you never even posted. Like, you never even talked about. Like, it's a lot. It's a long list of things Mm -hmm. of, like, just having conversations with people. They're like, oh, yeah, Trey did this, Trey did that. I only post 20% of what what they see. Oh, I already know. Look, my ear be to the streets now. I'm TV knowing, (laughs) now. So talk about, because there's some people, I will say, you're still doing good, but how do you feel about, like, when people have to post every good deed they do? They got to record every good deed they do. So you have to learn how to use it. Like myself, um, Mr. Rogers, you know, we figured out how to use our platform for what it's worth. You know, 
you gotta think, man, social media these days is strictly about going viral, mm -hmm. some fuck shit, some negative shit. And we figured out a way um, to use our platform to show the real world. Mm, right. Like, think about when you take Harvey, right? Yeah, you seen the floods, the news people came, but guess what? They came, left, went wherever they was their next destination right. was. And people not going in these homes. They not going in the trenches to really see what's mm -hmm. going on. So when we use our platform and we showing people sleeping in tents or people sleeping in molded houses with no walls, no nothing, mm -hmm. we're finding help. We motivating people who could help or people who could assist us with what we're doing to even make that situation much more bigger. And when I say bigger, meaning being able to help as opposed to me being able to help them get their walls back up. Now I may be able to help them get a new ceiling, help them get new floors. Right. Help them to, you, so the thing is, it depends on how you showing it. I've just mastered of, and the thing is, if you see me post it, people, I'm probably one of the few people they don't even look at like that. Like they be waiting on me to post because they don't really know what's going, know what's going they, on. They're not going outside to see what's going right, on. Right, right. Or they may not be in that area where it's going on, so they don't really know. Mm -hmm. And news pick and choose what they show, you mm -hmm. know. And then when they show it, don't necessarily be about what's going on in, in the lower class part. Right. So you have to be able to to expose that in a in a positive way. But for me, it's always worked that way. You got to realize for the culture, I made it cool to give back. Right, yeah. I can agree with that. You know, like, yeah. like think about it. It, it. It's not cool to to necessarily see me in goddamn boots up to my knees and water <laughs> with fishing suits on. Yeah, eight hey, friends trees. giving out turkeys mm -hmm. and shit. Yeah, that ain't the. Yeah. <laughs> but I think people are respected so much because I just don't give a damn. I'm not trying to fit in. I'm just doing me. Right, right. Meaning you got to accept it for what it is or have not shit going on about your business. I feel that. So can you tell the people that don't know? Because, you know, us being from Houston, especially me growing up in Houston, I've been on about Trey Day. How long? You've probably been doing that for like 15 yeah, years this, or more this now, is, right? Um, this is your, what Trey Day itself, this was year 15 that just passed. Okay. Um, but I've been doing stuff for, right for the people the in general. Yeah, I yeah. mean, because I, I remember being in like high school and you was doing Trey Day even back then. So I definitely want you to elaborate and kind of like let the people know about Trey Day and stuff and what you do in Houston every year with that. Um, Trey Day was, uh, it was awarded to me randomly too. Like I had been doing stuff for um, the community mm -hmm. just in general and I was at an event called No More Victims. I'm, I'm part of that with them. It's children of incarcerated parents, mm -hmm. kids who've been without their parents mm -hmm. from being locked up, been beat up, abused, molested, everything. Right. And, and um, Miss Marilyn, she had a, um, a team of kids that was graduating from No More Victims, and I popped up to surprise them. And we were at Papa Do's, and um, my God, Mama. Um, Miss Kathy, she, she, I'll never forget she came to me at Papa Do's and she was like, um, how would you feel about getting your own day? And you know, at that time, days were mm -hmm. being given out, especially not to no rapper or nobody who come from where I come from. And right. um, I blew off like, what you mean day? And she's like, your own house day. I'm like, you're yeah, right. And um, just kept it moving. And she called me back a couple of days later and she like, um, these are the options of days. What do you think about these days? I'm like, option of days for what? She say, man, stop playing. I told you, I'm dead serious about you getting a holiday. So, you know, I'm still not registering, but um, when she gave me the dates, my son named Danico, which is my disabled son, his birthday is the um, the 23rd of July. Mm -hmm. And she's giving me dates. Anything I do have to have meaning. Right. So that's what led to it being... July 22nd, mm -hmm. it was just a uh, uh, day before his mm -hmm. birthday. But they wanted to make the holiday strictly for the whole city to celebrate me. And me being me, I went against the grain and said, it ain't about celebrating me at all. We gonna make it for the city, meaning whatever I can do for the families and the kids, we gonna do it. And I remember the first one we ever did was at Sharpstown Mall. Um, Lil Duval came out. I think Rocco came out, Future came out. 
Like that that's how far back people don't understand the history of yeah, stuff I got that's going. Lit. And we had a a station wagon full of school supplies and just giveaways and shit, mm. but that was the biggest thing for us yeah. at that moment. And um mm. every year the shit just started getting bigger and bigger and bigger because I felt like everything that I do, I don't ever want to take steps backwards. So when it wasn't traded, I was doing just as much. So it's like if I'm doing this on a a normal day of me waking up, mm -hmm. I gotta make Trey Day bigger. Right. Then it got to the point where I start <laughs> just doing any and everything that kids from the community never get to see. I brought right. giraffes to the hood, never had they seen that. Brought elephants to the hood, camels, kangaroos, mm -hmm. um, snow to the hood. Like I, I was doing so much stuff that they never experienced. And you know, for me, it's important because that's lifelong memories that they'll have. Mm -hmm. Then I start bringing all the people that they'll see on YouTube because back then there wasn't really no Instagram like that. So people they'll see on social media, MySpace TV, any, anything that they could never get their hands on or get close to, mm -hmm. I brought them and put it right in front of them. That's real. So we're going to get into a little icebreaker. All right. Now you mentioned... You was at Papa Do's. Yeah. What you order from Papa Do's? I, that day I didn't order nothing. Okay, but it what do you eat when you go to Papa Do's? Let's uh, see how southern you are for real. It depends. If I'm moving fast, I just get they chicken strips and shrimp. If I'm just that cooling, then I for sure go for that king crab. Do you eat red beans and rice? Yeah, yeah, I definitely can always eat that. We love, a, look, I love beans. Yeah. I don't trust people who don't eat beans. Do your okay? stomach trust beans? My stomach, I right. got a stomach made of steel now. Yeah, I don't know. I do. <laughs> hey, I be fucking some beans up. I don't trust people who don't eat beans. So I had to make sure I could trust yeah. the tray. Yeah, yeah. All right, now. I know my I limits. I ain't going it. crazy with the beans. Though. You don't be going, okay. I mean, look, I don't go too crazy. You yeah. the only one. Because, baby, ain't nobody trying to be walking around gassy Putin. I feel like I've been eating beans for so long. She be walking around Putin. She do. That's why when she said <laughs> she, she, she That's why, <laughs> she, that's why when she said she got a stomach to steal, I said, I don't oh. know. <laughs> See, we been on the same. I thought we were supposed to be right here now. Come on now. Okay. Okay, Dre, go ahead with the next question. God damn it. I ain't so, gassing, motherfucker. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> so we're still kind of doing like icebreakers. I want to talk about what's something that you could think of that's probably like the pettiest reason that you stop dating somebody or stop talking to somebody. Mm. Damn. Um, that's a good, that's a good one. Mm-hmm. I don't really know. Yeah. I, I do know once you get to that point to, to getting on the other side of the fence, it ain't easy to come back. So yeah. mm -hmm. I'm one of the people, I might let a few things build up. Mm -hmm. And then when I finally say, fuck it, it's... You over You yeah, street. Yeah, no yeah. You street. No, nah, what you mean by Like strict, street? like, I feel like if I make one mistake or two, like, you should mm -hmm. forgive me. Damn. Yeah, no, no. Now he said I, it take a I, few yeah, things. I let him. A few I might not even be saying that, and they but might be. But see, that's not fair. You straight. No, nah, because you gotta realize the reason why I don't say as much because I'm not. I ain't like these other niggas. I'm not gonna be insecure, crying and complaining about everything. Mm. I don't think that's now, being insecure or complaining. I think that's more so communicating. Like, hey, I don't like when you do this, or hey, I don't really fuck with that. You can communicate. I get, yeah, yeah, but I think I'd be to the point where it's like, man, some shit. I'm just gonna. I'm going to overlook this shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I think the ultimate thing that uh, somebody can do is once I feel played, and it ain't even about when I say played, like them like messing with somebody, yeah. just played like doing some shit that you know I ain't going to respect and some shit that you don't want done to you. Mm, right. If you do some shit like that, then at that point when I feel played, then I'm definitely, I'm off it. You know okay, what I'm saying? that's fair. Well, then it'll get it's gonna get addressed. But what'll happen is you have some people these days, right? You have some people that's gonna value it, understand it, and and try and fix the situation. Mm -hmm. Or you got some people that avoid it and just keep moving. Like, oh well, fuck it. Yeah, I did some whole shit, but I'm mm -hmm. gonna keep moving. And that then they'll be mad at you for being mad at them. Right. And at that point, for me, it's fuck them, and it just is what it is. Even if I could have been. 
liking you like crazy. Like yeah. that'll automatically make me say, you be fuck falling in love. And my pride, huh? You be falling in love. Man, I haven't been in a long time, man. When was the last time you fell in love? Last time I was in a relationship, probably five years ago. Okay, that's not <laughs> too bad. Cause some yeah. niggas be like, shit, yeah. I was in third grade with Sally. She gave me nah. her crayon. This episode is sponsored by Bitter Help. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, XP. And it's your girl, Dre and Nicole. And y'all know we have to tell y'all every week because we swear by it. We've been using this for over three years now, yep. I think, at this point. BetterHelp.com. It is the season of depression, unfortunately. Yeah. So BetterHelp.com gives you therapy from the comfort of your own home. Yes, and I love BetterHelp, too, because, of course, depression is one of the things that you can use therapy for, but I also use it to help me with grief. And you can definitely, you know, use it from the comfort of your own home. But one thing I like about it, too, is that you can use it on the go. You can access your therapist from the app. Mm -hmm. They make it super easy to change therapists if you need to change your therapist. And it's just super easy, convenient, and affordable. Affordable. Yes, so we have partnered with them. So what you're going to do is go to betterhelp.com backslash poor minds. That's better H E L P.com backslash poor minds to get 10% off of your first month. Find your bright spot this season with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash poor minds today to get 10% off of your first month. That's betterhelp, H E L P.com slash poor minds. You know, funny Aww. shit, my last real relationship. <laughs> Funny, bro, and I, you know, just being real, I got she cheated. So, so for her to do that, that damn that fucked it up for a lot. So now I be, I'm, I'm the homie more than anything with. Mm. Damn. But it wasn't How even on no cheat. That's what I was about to ask. It wasn't. He knows it's me. crazy. Look, it wasn't even a cheating on the point of <laughs> I wasn't a solid nigga. What it is is I'm a highly respected nigga. So when you go to exposing people to a lifestyle that they not used to and they not and for one they ain't from the town mm -hmm. and they trying to fit in so you may be out and they may see a group of girls that may be around most of the time as i'm popping up whether i'm coming out to perform as a guest or just be out with some of my people mm -hmm. and um trying to fit in with some of the girls and you let them key you up to do some dumb shit mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. you end up mm -hmm. Fucking yourself in the process, you mm -hmm. know. She went on about her business, and, These and so many old. niggas was a lot of niggas was chasing her, you know. And um, she was a baddie. Yeah, I ain't. He said, on. "You know the vibe." Oh but hey, she, I uh, hey, I don't catch Trey. Look, so Trey said the truth. She, hey. uh, she ended up one of the niggas who was, who was chasing her like crazy. After once I cut off, and she seen it wasn't no coming back. She went and had a baby with him. So hey, go do your thing. Damn, what if she found true love? What you mean? With the nigga. Well, she, she should have did that for she was with me then, huh? I feel you. I feel you. Okay, Dre, what's your pettiest reason? Probably the pettiest thing I ever did. This one I was like younger though. I had stopped. <laughs> you Cause I know it's something stupid. <laughs> so I, I had stopped talking to this dude because like he had the little donut tire for a long time. Like you a, can't shit on oh that man because he like it was right. like but it was like months. It was like why you ain't went and brought a new tire yet? So but, you left him? Yeah, I mean he was never my man. You hey, he was never like my boyfriend right, because he ain't have a tire. So man. I was just like, yeah, why you ain't got a new tire yet? What's going on? Oh wow! And I did stop talking to him over there because why is you just riding around with your car like this? Damn, that sucks. He could have been a solid nigga for you, though. Well, I mean, I I still kind of, like, keep up with him. We, like, follow each other on social media. Aww. He, you know. Do he got a new tire? He has a new tire, yeah. yeah. If Let's he did, shit, y'all got, got the show. She can go buy him a tire. No hesitation. I know that's right. You said I should go buy No, him. I say you could. <laughs> I mean, I could do a lot of things. I wasn't about to do that, though. You should do. You should definitely do the real shit. Well, he got the tire Give now. Give back. No, that ain't as just Trey giving back. Do. It's just you never know. You never know when you may actually need. Like, no, I was, that's I was, true for sure. So, like, I was looking, right? I seen on social media when they were talking about all the restaurants that you're not supposed to take a female, right? Mm -hmm. But then I, I'm thinking in my head, but if you reverse it, what if y'all would have tried to take us somewhere like that and we shitted on y'all in some type of way? But that's never happening. I know. Niggas so, be so I'm not thirsty. taking a nigga so, on the first so day. If, but just say if you were. So if you say, hey, Trey, you know what? I want to take you out and you're not taking me to a five-star restaurant. Do I got the right to just cut you off? 
you do have that right, yeah. but you're not going yeah, to. Yeah, you should cut me off anyway since I was too thirsty. Because why am I taking you on a first date? <laughs> well, I'm you, too, too. You need to be wary. But you I'm need just to be saying, you, weary. So you like, why you want to take me on a first date? So you can't date? feel the nigga naturally on your own? Absolutely, I can feel a nigga, but I'm not asking no nigga or taking no nigga on no first date ever. So that goes. You're supposed to be trying to be chivalrous towards me. But guess what? That goes to prove my point. The point that I was making is y'all won't accept, but y'all also, it's a double edged sword. You won't accept it from us, but then if it comes from you, it's like, but, it, like it's okay for that. Well, mm-hmm. I'll say but this I've though. said this because we actually talked about this topic on tour. We haven't talked about it on the show, but like I said, when I was younger, some of those places that was on the list is acceptable to me. As a girl in their 20s. And, yeah, when I was younger, but also like even what I just talked about with the tire, that was when I was younger. Mm. Hold on, let, 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 let's backtrack. And if y'all two was out by yourself right now, and you was hungry, and it was a goddamn Applebee's up the street. You mean, Tim, you're going to be like, I'm finna starve because it ain't nothing. Absolutely. Good. I'm not going to like Applebee's. Applebee's. Now, I, I, Cheesecake Factory. Now, we can fuck with some chilies. Uh, th- 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 we ate chilies the other day. And we did eat chilies saying, at the airport the other day. That's the same as Applebee's. But the point I'm making is, Mm-mm. it's okay for y'all to go, but if a nigga take y'all there, it's a problem. So, this is what I felt about the list. I just felt like, first of all, why is everything food? I like creative dates. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, I like to have some thought in it. Like, why are you always trying to feed me? There are so many things to do in the but world you besides do know eat. That's what niggas hear all the time. The worst thing you could do is starve a girl, right? Well, I, well I'm we not, not that girl. Starving. Like, we not starving. And the, my thing is, you're not about to take me on a date somewhere that I don't go eat on my own. I would not go to Applebee's. Okay, so you said Chili's. Me and you going on a date right now, and I'm just like, man, you know what? I'm moving right now. I ain't got time to stop. Let's go eat a Chili's real fast. You gonna be cool with it? Why you is that like, your go to? And I'll, if you gotta do something you real fast, no. I need a date that's gonna we gonna take okay, a time. Let's, let's, be better, let's take the fast time. The point be being, if I take you to Chili's, are you gonna be like? You know what? Yeah, let's go eat. No, oh, you gonna make it? You would have been better no. off being like, I gotta do something real quick. Let's stop at Chick Fil A. I'd be like, all right, cool. Let's so you accept Chick Fil A over Chili's? It's not a date though. You just we just go and get something real we quick. Just gonna but get you food. see how you're dancing around the quiz. I'm, I'm just not. asking if I took you to Chili's what on the would first you say? date. It's uh, fuck the first date. But part. that's what the just, list was about, right? But I'm saying if me and you, you know what, man, it's long overdue. We supposed to go out. Come on, I I know we ain't gonna have time to sit and eat later. It's the Chili's right here. Let's go eat before we get to move. No. You have a problem with it. Yeah, I would be like, no. Because if it was long overdue, then you had, <laughs> you you had, had time plenty of time to plan, to plan well, a date. Trey, this is so not the truth. So what makes <laughs> what make cut date what 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 a- better to go to Chili's than mine to go to Chili's? Because this ain't a date. We was, and we was at the airport. We was just chilling. I'm asking the question. What makes her be. better than... And I ain't trying to be. That too. That don't mean... Just because you take somebody and to eat don't mean you got to be. You need to put in some effort, goddamn. Oh. It's the truth, okay. Trey. I know a lot about the truth, yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, I'm asking a question so I can get a true fan. Hey, hey, I'm hey, just telling I you. I said no. Lisa, what's your answer? <laughs> um, I feel like a first date is about effort. Things that were on that list was Waffle House, Chipotle, yeah. church. That's not effort to me. Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A, no, that's not effort. I'm saying that was on that, though. Yeah, it okay, said fast food chain. she just told me I could. It said fast food chain. I said you could take me on your way to go where you got to go Chick-fil-A. to get something real quick in a drive through Okay, that, let's switch it. If y'all really like a nigga, would you be more No, passive? I don't know if I like you yet. The I'm just saying, I mean, baby. I had some, like, top quality men, like, you know, slide in my DMs. But until you have time to take me on a proper date... And until you, like, had a conversation with me, we exchanged numbers. Mm-hmm. We've had a phone conversation. We've texted. So you kind of have an idea what I like to do. It, it ain't about to be none of that. It mm-hmm. ain't no real quick with me. I got to talk to you now, Trey. <laughs> I'm an auntie. I'm, I'm 34. You ain't finna just be like, oh, yeah, let's pull up a little Applebee real quick. I, don't, yeah. I ain't trying to do that. I'm just, I'm just, I don't eat Applebee, but I'm just asking the exactly. question, though. Exactly, when the last See, time we you all got just, something I'm in just common. Ask. <laughs> nah, but the point is, if a person <laughs> is genuinely just trying to take you to make sure that you fed, mm-hmm. you can't shit on them for the process. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not shitting on them, but like I said, for a first date to me, like, going to dinner is cool, but I like... I like creative and fun first right, You said that a couple times, so give me an example. So one thing that was on the list that I didn't agree with was sporting events. 
I went to... You um, do have girls that like sports. And I don't... You know, I ain't gonna lie. I really don't even care for sports, but I be okay. having a ball. I mm -hmm. went to the... Um, a few months ago, I went to the Astros game for the first Shout day. I was in there drunk talking about go team, go team, baby. Go Astros, baby. I didn't even know that. I didn't even know it was the astronauts. I didn't know. I thought, I didn't know. It was short for astronaut, bitch. It is? Yes. Astros is short for <laughs> astronaut, bitch. I never knew that. Hey, I was in there having a ball. And yes. it was fun, though, because I like, like, he was like, okay, let's go do something different. So we went to the Astro games. I was drunk. We had a ball. Like, I like creative dates. Like, the second day we went on, we went to, like, this little rooftop, and it was, like, a cover band playing, like, old Motown songs. Mm -hmm. Like, it was just real creative. Like, that's the stuff I like to do. So I just like thoughtful. For, and those tickets were $20 to the rooftop thing. Mm -hmm. So it's not even about that, the that money. That led to my next point. So then if that's the case, it's not even about the cost or mm -mm. the situation. Well... Uh, you could do, Chili's you could is do. not the environment that I want to be yeah, in. Yeah, it's, it's no fun. Don't be too many black people enough for you. Yeah, where are the <laughs> niggas at? <laughs> where the niggas at? Yeah, oh, well, let me tell y'all before look, we move we on. in Atlanta, it's niggas everywhere. It's niggas everywhere. Oh, I'm even tripping off of that. I oh. love going where niggas is. The pettiest reason I stopped talking to somebody is because I felt like he kind of knew who I was from the show or whatever. And I felt like he was trying too hard to laugh at things I was saying. Because I feel like people know, like, I'm goofy. But it was, like, points where I wasn't even telling no jokes. He was, huh? Uh, yeah, I was like, yeah, because, you know, I grew up in Orange, Texas. He was like, Orange. <laughs> Girl, oh, nigga, you crazy. Orange, I'm from Orange, Texas. Nigga, I used to be in Orange on the regular. The Golden Triangle. What yeah. you know? See, I told I you, real to nigga. I used all to be day. in Orange on the regular. Oh, yeah. that's why I grew up that's in crazy. Orange, Texas. Hey, well, what, you've pulled out the right... Yep. E A T. I yeah, feel you. Yeah, yeah. I used to be in them running them streets now. I Bro. told you. The Golden Triangle all day. Stop playing with me. I told yeah. you, Fruit City, baby. That's exactly you did, what it you is. Did too. So, yeah, I just felt like every time I was saying anything, like it wouldn't even be oh, in my. Like, hold on, nigga. You making Orange proud right now. Oh, I love That's my city. Yeah, yeah, I baby, do baby, this she all. making Orange. They be saying she the best thing. I don't know what right that shit heard Earl tell me. And what's been going on lately, like, Earl? I done surpassed it now. <laughs> Oh, Earl, I done passed you up, my brother. Oh, nigga, you. You know what I'm saying? They ought to have a parade for you at I this point. I'm telling you. She's <laughs> on that. She need I Lex need P Day. Lex day. Oh, I need Lex man. P Day. They playing you on my top. You deserve a day. I've been oh, around man. the United States. What I do when I get on stage, Dre? <laughs> Fruit City. Every four time. Oh, nine. <laughs> stop playing with her. Yeah, that's crazy. All day. But yeah, so I had to stop talking to him because it was like... Sometimes, you know, believe it or not, I like to have serious conversations. Mm -hmm. So I felt like I would be saying anything. I could have been like, yeah, man, because my grandma died. Your grandma, bitch? That whole died. Yeah. It was like, all right. He was just doing too much. Reel it back in. Yeah. So, yeah, I definitely stopped. Like, he, it, he was just doing too much. That I think ain't he petty, though. Huh? That's not really petty. It's me. not petty, but I felt like... He knew who I was, but he didn't want to say it. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you could tell when somebody know what you do. And, you know, I'm not saying, like, everybody know who I am. That's not. But it was just, like, things he was saying. And he, like, wanted me to talk about the show. He wanted me to bring it up. And he and I was like, okay, this is, mm -hmm. not, this is not that. So, yeah, he had to get kicked had to, to the, get the boot. Mm -hmm. You ready to get into these topics, girl? I am. Okay, go ahead with the first topic. Okay. So, for the first topic, I wanted to talk about do you think men are intimidated by successful women? Because we had actually seen a post mm. on, I can't remember if it was Twitter or Instagram, but we had seen a post where basically this guy was saying, like, if a woman has her own home, like a single woman, he meets her, he starts dating her, she own a home, he don't want to date her because she's too independent. Um, Which I think is crazy. That sounds crazy as hell so to me. So, it's a, it's, again, it's a double-edged sword. Mm -hmm. Um Never supposed to, them only weak niggas that would be mm -hmm. insecure about that, right? Um, the flip part about that is, in this day and age, you, you we used to seeing woman power, or women power, shall we say. Mm -hmm. So some you do have some women, not saying you, you have some women that feel, because it's that they can handle and talk reckless to a nigga, I got mm -hmm. you. So it just depends, I don't know what he didn't experience, but any real one, Fuck no, yeah, nigga, I want you to have your own shit because any two ways we dating, I'm going to be trying to figure out ways to help you get your own shit so you could be on just as well as I'm on. Mm -hmm. What happened if I fall off? 
Mm-hmm. Right. You and I feel saying? like if a woman already own her own home and you meet her, if y'all end up being together, she already owns her own home. Y'all, she has equity in the home. Like, that's building generational wealth. Mm-hmm. So why wouldn't you want that? You know, his reasoning, be, he was, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's crazy to me. Yeah, his reasoning was basically saying because she's going to be too hard to impress. She wants to do everything on her own. Mm-hmm. If, if, like, you know, they end up being together, you're going to have to convince her to move out of her house or sell her house or do whatever to her house. And he was just saying it's just too much hassle. Mm-hmm. Like, women who are really on their shit basically are too much hassle. Mm-hmm. I mean, and like, like I said, go both ways because you do have some women who mentality is fuck these niggas. I don't need a nigga for nothing. Unless it may be the fuck on, whatever that may be. Right. Mm-hmm. So some of that energy definitely can come off at times. But you have, I know a lot of independent women who cool, cool as fuck. They don't even mm-hmm. think. Because I feel like any two ways, if we in a real relationship or we really trying to rock as a team, both of us got to be willing to sacrifice different stuff. Whether it may be me giving away my place, right? To where well, it depends on who got the the nicer house, right? <laughs> right. Exactly. Right. You, you, yeah. get the, you get the point of what I'm saying. Uh-huh. And we can rent yeah. out the other one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you don't necessarily have to get rid of the mm-hmm. other one. You still can keep the other one. Right. So it's just it's just about understanding at that point. Now, in my experience now of being where I'm at in life, I notice that there's literally like two type of guys. I feel like at this point in my life, I only attract successful men. I think that's safe to say. Yeah. But it's like two types of successful men. It's that successful man that they love the fact that like I'm making money and I'm doing what I'm doing and I'm very driven. And then there's a successful man who like they don't like that because they want a woman that needs they them. Need they them. want a woman that depends on So you have a lot of niggas that do that, right? Just being real. You have niggas that uh, move a woman into their house, make them take everything that that, that that woman may have knew how to do, strip them of it. Not, in, not necessarily strip them, like you just... You make it to where they comfortable, but then they become dependent on you, right? Mm-hmm. So then when a nigga decide he want to go do something else, you still got to damn the sit your ass in that house because you ain't really got you, you, you can, depending you don't got on nothing. me. Mm-hmm. So you have mm-hmm. niggas who do whole shit like that. That's mm-hmm. that's the mentality of niggas. It's that or you either get them pregnant and try and stop the next nigga from trying to Ooh. come with niggas. Do they really, really work though? Still, I was just gonna say they still feel the real. Niggas still gonna try. I, niggas gonna damn to try hit anything yeah. anyway. So, but I'm saying that's the mentality mm-hmm. of that's just me giving y'all game right. Now. That's just how niggas is. I feel like a lot of no, times. I, I know I done dated somebody like this. Yeah, I just feel like a lot of times though, <clears throat> the same men that try to control women with their money are the same men that get mad when women approach them for that. It's like if you use your money for power to try to control somebody, like you approach somebody like, oh, I can do this X, Y, Z for you. She gets with you. You start doing all this stuff for her. And then you like hold it over her head or make her feel right. like, oh, if you leave me, ain't nobody going to do X, Y, Z for you. I, I honestly feel those used to be, and I can't speak for all, but majority, them used to be the niggas who probably back in the day in school probably used to didn't get no pussy. Was lame. Probably mm-hmm. wasn't getting no attention. And what happened, they got they... They hit, they lick, whatever that situation may be. They came across some money, and it's like, fuck that. I want to be him. I want to make motherfuckers feel like they need me. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because the natural, any any real solid nigga, it don't matter if if we together or not together. Like, for me, right, it's only one thing that'll make me not. Once I feel like a motherfucker trying to use them. Mm-hmm. If I feel like they're trying to take it to that to their advantage, and it's like, Okay, you doing this, but you're not even trying on your own. Right. Then that's gonna make me like, nah, I ain't, I'm not no sucker. You're not gonna make me do that. Right. But if I'm watching you try shit, it make me more happier just to relieve some of that stress. You mm. know, like that I tell sense. a woman, right? I, if which I'm single now, but if I was dating, you know, a lot of people have women mentality to be like, I'm not doing good right now. I'm trying to figure myself out, and for me that would be the time that I would come in because I don't want to be with you when everything good. I'd mm-hmm. rather show you I'm rocking with you when I could have got my ass up and left, but I didn't. You right. know what I'm saying? It just showed more uh, how loyal and how much a nigga rocking with you. You know what I'm saying? So that'd be my mentality. I do think that. sometimes people go into situations though they're looking to be saved, but it's different if like you go into a situation, you're really trying to get to know somebody and really you know fuck with them for who they are. And then, you know, like, you come up on a hard time or something, and then he wants to step up. Because one thing I can say, 
one of my close guy friends just recently went through this. And he was dealing with this girl, and it was like, she was just always asking him for stuff. Like, mm. always. And I'm just like, bro. And I fuck with him, and it's like, I didn't want to sound like a hater. Like, you know, because I get it. I get it, girl. Get your coins, you yeah, know? Yeah, but if you really fuck with him, you're supposed to keep it Yeah, I did. I did. I had, I, I'd be like, hey, she is really trying to run it up on your ass. Like, I hate to yeah. be that. Because you know why I say I hate to say that? It's because I care about him, but I also get it from the other end. He's like, you out here, you trying to make ends meet. You got to get it how you live. So it's like, I'm not trying to knock her hustle, but at the same time, like, this is a good guy. Like he's a good guy. Some yeah. some niggas deserve for it to be yeah, raining yeah. up on on. Like and, they and deserve if that's that your shit. People, for sure. You gotta just you gotta be fair, right? Because that's just like if, if me and you cool, and I look at you like sis, and I'm I'm watching you fuck with a, a, a goofy nigga. I'm never gonna hate on that man, right? But I'm also gonna let you know, like, hey, bro, like you need to start being sharp, paying attention. Paying like, on if, business. Nigga, if, if you if you having funny feelings, nigga, you need to be making sure you paying attention to certain shit because. If I really rock with you, I look goofy by allowing you to look right. just as goofy. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Of course, now you never, you never want to hate, but you know it's just that. And, and another thing that that people do on both ends is they make you feel guilty to where you damn they have to do. So I don't like that, yeah. that either. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was a it was a very strange situation because I actually, you know, it was crazy because I knew the girl too. It's not like we were friends or nothing. But oh, you but just, you knew both of them. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give you the tea later, girl. Because <laughs> I gotta tell you, it's a. Did mix. you end up talking to the nigga? Yeah, I, I had to tell him because this is not the first time though. Because he's told me about other situations, and I'm like, and he's such a good guy, but he's so green, dog. I was yeah. just gonna say, if you say a couple, it ain't yeah, really he's shit so you can do it. green. So pattern. And it's yeah. crazy because me and him used to like we we never like mess got physical, but we tried to date and it didn't mm -hmm. work out. But I'm like, okay, but you the homie. And it's crazy because the whole time me and him dated, I never asked him for nothing. I never was like, and I knew he had money, but it was like it wasn't about that. I'm trying to get to know you once mm -hmm. I. Mm -hmm. figured out you weren't my person okay we can be friends and then i see all the stuff that these girls are doing and it was just like damn man like i really felt bad it was yeah. it was it was getting too bad because i'm like damn nigga okay let me step in and say something because the dating scene in atlanta is a mess it's a mess everywhere but i feel like in atlanta it's extremely bad i think the dating scene now is <laughs> I say, in a sense, premeditated. Everybody planning their future. Yeah. Not really deal with meaning, not planning their future like, hey, I possibly want to get married. Like, worst case, worst, how shit gonna be working out for me if I went, if I go ahead and fuck with this nigga? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, at least I'll be getting at this, least this, I got and this, this. Yeah. Like and this. I got I feel, a fallback plan. I definitely yeah. feel like people be planning it out on the yeah, first yeah, date, so you just never yeah. know if it's genuine intentions or not. Mm. Yeah, no, that's time. And even in time, time don't even always tell because this is what I tell the I female, think people going right? to play their role if they know what they could get, too. Right? But the thing is, you can only play for so long, right? So the thing I will, what I tell somebody if I'm dealing with them, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if, if I'm fucking on the first date or a year later. If that's all I wanted to do, mm -hmm. I know niggas who can wait Ooh. that year and go yeah. through the process for the challenge. Still get done with you and talk Ooh. shit around. Oh, oh my God. I said that on the show before because I feel that way too. But I had a thing. situation like that. Remember, mm -hmm. I wait, I made, like, we waited like six months and it wasn't, not, he was just a whore. He was a horrible ass nigga. Mm -hmm. It was like after that, it was like he just turned. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, that's what he was waiting on. Yeah. yeah. But the thing is, I, be, I only say that to say I be trying to let motherfuckers know, like, but you also can fuck with somebody on your first date, and then they can be with you for a lifetime. Yeah. Y'all got a lifelong friendship. It go both ways. Mm -hmm. you know? So this is our cocktail of the day. This one is the takeoff time. This is a good throwback that we've done before. We did this last year around this time. Uh, we recently had lost takeoff. That was one of my favorite Migos. So this one, we have some tequila or vodka. We have some orange liqueur. We have some apple cider, a little bit of lemon juice, and of course, some of that so mixy cinnamon demerara. We shook that up, put it over ice, and then as a garnish, we have a fresh cinnamon stick and a dehydrated apple slice. And then I just topped it with a little bit of caramel and cinnamon on top. So this is the takeoff time. Cheers. 
But That's yeah. very, very true. Okay, so before we get into this second topic, y'all know that this episode is sponsored by LS Cream Liqueur. Y'all, this is a black-owned liqueur. It is holiday season. So, Dre likes to put it in her coffee to get her day started. I love to put it in my coffee, put it in my hot cocoa, y'all. It's so good. It's like, it's kind of like Bailey's, but way more elevated. Way more I elevated. love that it has like this coconutty flavor. You can taste like the nutmeg and everything. It's so good, y'all. And it's vegan. Yep. It's super good. And so, Trey, we got you. A, I know you don't drink. You know that way. But if you got drink. a little lady friend over. But you give over, it to somebody for, you know, a little. I'm give it to Drea. drinking in the coffee. I agree. Or time. it could be like a little stocking stuffer for somebody. Yeah. Okay. Or you might want to drink a little one, clear? too. What is that? It's not either. It's like a cream liquor. Yeah. So, it's kind of like Bailey. Have you heard of Bailey's before? I don't know nothing about nothing. You don't know nothing about nothing. nothing. so good it is it's so good you know vanilla coconut cinnamon and nutmeg mm, it's the perfect blend i love it i wish there was a way we could get more people to drink it mm, i know what about a contest Ooh, that's a great idea let's call it the ls cream challenge let's call stevens and see what he thinks okay hey stevens hey what's up queens so Stevens, we have a great idea to make even more people try LS Cream. We're gonna call it the LS Cream Challenge. People just need to take a picture with their bottle of LS and create a cocktail or simply just pour them a little glass of LS on ice and post it on their social media. Mm -hmm. All they have to do is tag LS, tag Poor Minds, and they need to follow us, of course. You know, make sure they tag us, all that stuff. And they can win some money. Mm-hmm. So how much were you thinking about? I don't know. What about 1K? Mm, let's make it 5K. Anything else? Oh, my. <laughs> I'm going to make some cocktails myself, girl. Purr. All right. Talk to y'all later. Bye. Thanks, Stevens. Okay, guys, let's recap this. This is how it's going to go down. First, you take a picture of your original LS Cream cocktail recipe, whatever it is, and make sure the LS Cream bottle is visible in the picture. Then you post it on your Instagram and tag at LS Cream Liqueur and at Poor Minds in the caption with the LS Cream hashtag, hashtag LS Cream 5K Challenge. Also, make sure to tag three of your friends to invite them to the challenge. The team will choose eight of the most original pictures, so remember to be creative. Then we're gonna post the eight pictures on our Instagram story so you can vote which ones are gonna be going to the next round. Then we'll do the same thing for the final four until we get to the top two. And the winner will get $5,000 and the runner up is gonna get $1,000. Listen y'all, to enter the competition, you need to go to creamls.com slash challenge to register for age verification. We need to make sure that you are 21. This is also where you'll find the official rules to read we can't wait to see what you guys have in store for us make us proud cheers y'all cheers why don't you drink out of curiosity um have you ever drank before never drink never smoke man not no, you no, never no, tried no. it like no nah, so a lot of people now and, and and these days a lot mm -hmm. of do it a lot of people do it just for they turn up to feel good mm -hmm. but Coming up, how we came up, they would do it when they going through it. That's what would put them at ease, you mm. know, from whatever they were dealing with. And I always like to deal whatever I'm dealing with, head up. Mm -hmm. However I feel at that moment, it's not gonna get no worse. Cause the thing is, if if I was to fuck with it and it went off, the reality gonna sink in. That shit still. That is some yeah. really, really good advice. It's crazy. I don't mean to get morbid and weird, but last year when my mom passed, I made it a point like not, not to, drink to drink because I wanted to feel everything and I wanted to go through it and I wanted to remember. And, wing, and that and wing yourself to to be able to start making it through it. Yeah, know? yeah. I mean, because of course everybody know I be, look, I smoke a little weed now. I drink a little drink. Auntie gonna have a little one too now to wind down. But like when I go through things, like traumatic, especially something like that, I make sure to stay away from all that stuff. So I'm glad that you said that because that's a very 
big deal because I know when I used to go through like a breakup or something or just be depressed or sad, mm-hmm. I would drink. I would smoke. And it was just like spiral out of control. Yeah. So it was like when I went through that, it was like, okay, let me just step away from everything and just have a clear mind. Yeah, that's why for a lot of people, it kind of becomes like a codependency type of yep. thing. Like, And like you were saying, like then when you stop doing it or if you don't have access to it, then shit is even worse because you've been using this to cope and mm-hmm. now you don't have access to it. Mm-hmm. And that's how people turn to crack and us in stronger shit fast. Yeah, yeah. you right. Yeah. See somebody. That's what the crack. old people say. You I know, gonna, you know. I ain't gonna say crack these <laughs> days, but no, of course she always I, go to crack for some but, reason. Yeah. I don't know why. That's I ain't say to. crack, but I do say definitely some strong shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they be trying to find something stronger. You ain't, you ain't really seeing people out there on the people pipe don't right smoke now. Crack no more? I, I ain't saying that, but oh. it ain't a lot of them. Not like well, I, not I, as much. I don't feel like. I Am I wrong? I don't feel like people our age do crack. No, like I don't think people in our age group it, it, it do depends, crack. It depends. I feel you know, like people I, in I've our. I've seen homeless people do a lot of things yeah. from stress. You know. Um. See, I, I don't know. I don't honestly. I don't know what people do. I feel like maybe it's like the opioids, painkillers, yeah. stuff like that. That's why I'm thinking pills more pills. Yeah, popping popping them pills, pills, yeah, You know, and take a little perk. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm just saying. You <laughs> people really go think people really think you do perks at this point. I'm sure. I'm fucking weak. Okay, she's so always now making we, a joke about it. Now we gonna move on. Okay, so shout out to LS Cream. Thank yes. you for supplying the liquor per usual. Um, so I wanted to talk about this because I feel like I don't know. I want to talk about this because I feel like people mess with you about this all the time, Drea. I feel like I want to talk about confidence versus cockiness. Because I've always personally felt like Dre was a very confident person. But I see, you know, you know how people be saying crazy stuff to you all the time. Like, and I feel like it's not, mm-hmm. Dre like is what? not comp- cocky. Like She's just telling the truth. I just think people like to attack me at times because I think my confidence, me or me overly feeling myself and fucking with myself really bothers people who don't fuck with themselves mm-hmm. like that. So then it makes them want to try to say things to you or tear you down to make you feel like you're not what you, you know, think you are. I think it happens all the time on social media. It is. I don't see how I'm being tuned Okay, with we're she with can probably, I'll, I'll right. give you an example because obviously Dre is funny. So she had tweeted something. She was like, the baddest bitches in Houston is Beyonce, Meg, the me. Now everybody knows. <laughs> I said, <laughs> "I mean," and she was like, "Who else? Who else? Who you got?" But like, I was obviously kidding, was you know. But you know, it but was some. Let me people. tell you before you say that, you gotta understand. Common sense ain't common these days. Yeah, right. So That's obviously true. you joking. They that do not mean they was finna be thinking you was joking at all. Right. Yes. And I think so. that's always the case. Mm-hmm. Usually. Yeah. So but obviously, people take, they take everything personally. I mean, but at the end of the day, even if she really did feel like that, what's she wrong? She probably with that? did, right? Because <laughs> they say when we when people joke or say certain shit, they really. I don't definitely, feel. yeah. I mean, I feel like you know it'd be a little true to it. I be feeling like you know. <laughs> <laughs> she up there come on I'm now. up there but I just but, feel like but what's wrong with that so I think somebody had responded they were like okay Drea you just be taking shit too far like you be doing too much it was like but how are you doing too much or taking shit too far by clapping for yourself so I wanted to talk about like what is the difference between being confident and being cocky or conceited cause you would you say you're a confident person Definitely confident, but the the difference is, I'm confident to where I can walk in the room and don't say nothing, and my presence still gonna be felt. This mm-hmm. is probably way more than the motherfucker coming here yelling and doing the most. Mm, and that's how I feel too, because I feel like I have that presence when I go places and mm-hmm. when I'm out. I, obviously, outside of us talking on camera and doing our show, but when we just be out, I'm very quiet and reserved in mind my business, and I don't be talking that much. I don't be trying to get no attention, but for some reason, I just feel like people just still. Always feel away. You you gotta realize sometimes people be fighting their own demons, yeah. their mm-hmm. own their own insecurities, and yeah. it's an issue. Um, confidence and cocky. I'm always gonna be shall I say confident, right? Because mm-hmm. I've always went against the grain and did what I wanted to do and stood right. on my own. Even when you go to talking about giving back, that's not shit that was written in the blueprint for a right. nigga like me to do. I mm-hmm. did what I wanted to do. Um, cocky. I don't believe, I me, mean, I, I just don't believe in being cocky, you know what I'm saying? I feel like I don't care to try and make you fuck with me. If you're going to fuck with me, you're going to fuck with me right. regardless, you know? And it's not to say what she's doing is wrong, you know? Like, definitely, if I'd have seen that, 
I'd have probably randomly shot her too. Like, boy, you a bullshit <laughs> nigga. Though. Just because, it, it, you know, it's not that 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 she's not cute or nothing like that. It's just I'm playful like that. You right. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I, I wouldn't take that no type like way. Like she's meant to. But it. you do have some people that, now when you go to saying cocky, you got some people that walk in the room and they just demand, hey, I want everybody to look at me. Mm-hmm. I'm going, yeah. I, I, I want to show y'all I, I, I'm somebody and that I don't fuck with. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? For me, I feel like confidence is like how you feel about yourself. Like you that's have every the, right. That's how you feel about yourself. To me, cockiness is, this is how I take cockiness. When I see somebody that's cocky and I be like, what the fuck? It's somebody, how they feel about their self, but it's not necessarily true. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like you, no, 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 no. Let me say this. Let me say this though. You supposed to believe in yourself. Right. You supposed to Talk highly about yourself, but sometimes it's like now you know you pushing. Like you see somebody and they be when they get on the beat, they really not rapping about shit. They can make a good song, but how dare you be like I'm the best rapper alive? So it's mm. two things with that, and I hate keep saying it's two things. Two things with that because in their mind they made a pump they self up to really mm-hmm. believe that's what the fuck that is. And the second part is niggas be trolling. That's Thanks. just what people be trolling. Yeah, that's true. But people really do like like. Right, if you take a, um, I gotta watch what I say because everybody in it and oh, they gonna be watching. Shit. Yeah, they gonna be watching. It could be a certain type of male or female that they may have been pushed around, poked at as whatever throughout their whole life, and they start building their self, building their confidence up, and they feel like, man, fuck it, I am who I am, unapologetic, and. Mm-hmm. I want to let it be known. That's how I feel. So mentally, they may feel that now what they see may not be what we see. Mm-hmm. Everybody in this room may see totally opposite of what the fuck they seeing, but in their mind, that's what they see. So it, it's I just don't do the the mud the loud mouth doing too yeah. much shit. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I feel. What shitting on somebody when you're doing it in the yeah. process? Yeah, like when you try to overcompensate. Yeah. Like you really don't believe what person. you're saying. And that's what I was gonna say too. I feel like it's the difference between like believing in yourself and having confidence in yourself and feeling yourself. But that's just how you feel about you. Right. And nothing is wrong with how you feel about you. You should feel that way about you. It's for me when people try to tear down other people right. or make mm-hmm. other people feel less that's than being too cocky. Yep. Right. That's what. Being yeah. cocky is you know, like me. I ain't gonna lie, yeah, that shit you got on is cute, but they, you know, my shit way better. Right, than like, yeah. yeah, that's being cocky because yeah. you didn't have to say that last At part, all. you know. Yeah. But you definitely have people out here that are like that. They try to big themselves up based off of what they have and what another person don't have. Mm. Versus, it's it's people who just they fuck with themselves and they love themselves and they feel like they. But the genuine shit. solid people see through that. Like, yeah, we don't think people don't see through it. People right. see through that shit. Like, okay, yeah, they. They got to do whatever they got to do to make themselves feel mm-hmm. comfortable right now. Man, and and that's and that's you said it right on the head because I think I mean we've talked about this on the show before because it was like when I first met Drea, I was like the person where it was like I always felt like my personality was a lot, so I would try to I didn't know who I was for a long time, so I kept trying to like mold myself into what I thought people wanted to see or what my man thought. At the time when I was in a relationship, mm-hmm. I was in a terrible relationship when I first moved out here. I was always trying to mold myself. And I was like, you know what? The people around me who really, really love me, they know the real me. And they love it. So I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Let me just be my natural, authentic self. And if they're going to accept you, they're going to accept you. And, and honestly, I feel like that's when the show got better. Because you really got to see me and Drea's friendship I'm saying somebody real. put y'all together, y'all knew each other. No, we no, know each we've other. been friends since we lived in Houston. We both used to... Do you remember prime time? When mm. it was open, it was like off of South Main. Definitely remember. Oh, yeah. Uh, it was like right a, by Shipley's. Is that over there about? It's, it's like by down Carol, the street. It's, it's, down, it's down literally by right Carol, by Carol's. Yeah, it used to be okay, yeah. down the street from Carol's. So that's what we made. We both used to bartend up there. And this was like 2015, 20. Shout out to Carol's. So I used so to be having a time. Y'all just randomly, I'm saying, y'all randomly wanted to do a show together? Y'all no, just, so I moved here first. I moved here in 2016 with somebody that I was cool with in Houston and it didn't end up like working out and then we moved apart. (laughs) I was living on my own in my own apartment and me and her were still cool and I was like, oh, you know, you should move to Atlanta because she was telling me she really wanted to get into media and stuff because we both have degrees in mass communications. Salute. 
So I thank you. So I knew she always wanted to kind of like get into media and stuff. And at the time, Houston wasn't really a place where I feel like you could excel in that at the time. So she moved out here and she wanted to start a YouTube channel. We started a YouTube channel, kind of took off a little bit. And then we had a segment called Wind Down Wednesday, which was kind of like a shorter version of what we do right now. It was only like 20 minutes though. And so we ended up changing the name and turning it into a podcast and that's what happened. But so we it was, was like natural, first. but I felt like I was always trying to like, I didn't know, I was like, oh, I think I need to do this because this is what people want to see. And Dre was like, bro, you are funny. Like just relax and be yourself. And I think that was the first time I really got to sit in that because like growing up, you know, I grew up in Orange. I went to an all white school. I was always like, then it's like when I got to college, I was around all black people. So it was like, I'm kind of like still like I'm different because it's like this and that. She was like, girl, like you're beautiful. You funny. Just do you. And you're right about that. People can see through everything. And I felt like once we really, we both kind of sat back and was just like, because she was more so of like, not wanting to talk and show her personality because everybody was just like, okay, she's just pretty. She's just a face, whatever. And it was like, no, she's actually fucking hilarious. You know what I'm saying? So I think being your authentic self, people going to see that regardless. And we say that all the time. That's mm -hmm. so true. That is. That is. Mm -hmm. Shout out to the people that keep it 100. <laughs> Girl. Throw me them. You know what I'm saying? Uh, hey, Ty is not here today. Yes. But shout out to Ty for these but drinks. This drink, I'm a little, oh, thank you. Oh, you I got some more stuff coming. Right yeah, cool. Now you know we love coming. a gift. I love try. a good gift now. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to do something special for y'all. What is, what oh, is thank it? You. What the hell? I can't open my mm -hmm. Oh, this is a little. It's a spe it's a speaker. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Me and Drea literally always forget our speakers at home when we, when we go be on the tour. Yep. Oh, yeah. Because we, you know, we be in the mirror doing our makeup, getting ready for our shows. We actually really need this. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we going out of town tomorrow. That's just when y'all doing y'all little walk in the workout, whatever y'all doing. You count your steps, but oh, I'm gonna yeah. send y'all. I see y'all support mine. Bump boxes for real. For I like this a little bump box. I like these. Thank you, Thank Trump. you. You know, people don't really be bringing us gifts. I don't. So thank you, Trey Pearl. And it's water resistant. Mm. Okay. I like this. Got a flash. Uh, like y'all, y'all, and you, you know what, y'all can help me, right? Because y'all females, y'all mm -hmm. give me y'all uh, perspective. Okay. IG. Let me see that over there. So, you know, they finna release my um my glasses. Ooh, so, I love a y'all female, so y'all can. Okay. So, okay, let me see. Let me see them now. Now you know I'm gonna be honest. You supposed to. Now, first of all, Shit, is this I the box gonna come in? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. I'm fucking with the box yeah. already. Yeah. It's giving casket sharp. <laughs> casket okay. sharp. I'm just saying, it's giving like you know. I like it. I like it. So the presentation is fire. Okay. So we gonna open them up and see what they uh, look like. Habibi and ABN. So this is what does it say? Habibi. Habibi yeah. and ABN. Okay, let me pull them out. Oh, those are nice. Oh, I'm fucking with these already. I like those a lot. I was just saying this today. I and need some glasses on the that side because yeah. I yeah, love to nice. wear glasses, but I need some glasses where you can still see you my still face. Still see, yep. Those look good on you. I know they do. I can well, I feel that. I guess they're universal then. I yeah, they look good. good. Yeah. Are they supposed to be more like geared towards me? I men? know I look good. I was just trying to just, do my yeah. thing. I ain't... I'm I'm fucking with these because I can I like actually those. see too. I was I swear on everything today. I was like I need some glasses because you know you had them glasses that you had on in New Orleans. Yeah, and I was like I need some they glasses. They kind of look like them too. Yeah, and I was like I need some glasses that, that can actually because I be doing my makeup mm -hmm. and I be wanting to you know be like you know incognito a little bit or when I say something I need a nigga to feel it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I need a nigga to feel, you feel, you feel me, right? Yeah, I'm with you. All right, so when I put them <laughs> glasses down, I need to know, I, you need to hear what I'm saying, but I need them to still see this face. Mm -hmm. You can see the face. This is it right the here. The face facing. You did your big one. Y'all like those. Those are nice. All right, all right, all Nah, right. you good. I, I'm, I'm going to keep it solid with you. Right. Them yours. Let me let uh. All right, go. Let Drea, try them on. Try them on, Drea. Right, try them on, Drea. Come on. You'll go get one out the truck. Hell I'm, I'm yeah. Get them, I'll get them one. Go ahead and give me one yeah. out the truck, they black boy. Even, they ain't even out yet. Oh, what? Ooh, we got the exclusives. Yeah, them hoes five. They cute. Oh, they cute. real cute. No, 
I know they cute. I was like, how they look on me? That's what I'm saying. It look cute. It look good on you. You look fresh to death. I like that. I'm feeling myself. I'm fucking with it, Trey. I like Thank it. Thank you, Trey. Oh, good. Look, sorry. We look. We gonna we gonna get you. We gonna get you for them glasses, little boy. <laughs> hey, I'm fucking with it. You know, it could be a little, it could be a poor mom's collab. They buy them and get five percent off or something. We, you know what? We gonna talk. We can about talk that. about it. Hey, we, I got. Hey, I'm what? all for trying to make sure everybody able to eat. Hey, you know me. One thing about me, I'm solid with it. Well, not even that. We do one better. I, I hold a conversation. We are trying to design a pair for y'all. Ooh, oh, hey. Ooh. they like some little pink yeah. ones. You know, that's our color. We like a little pink, a little Pinky purple. Is our color. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to move on. So now it's time to, to get, get into the bed. Bow. The bed. Bow. The bed. Bow. 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 Okay, so for the bed topic today, this actually goes into what we were talking about earlier because I want to, I always say this. I feel like for a man, the only thing that's better than good sex is new sex. So why do men get bored after sex? Like, why is curios curiosity is something that gets men in trouble? Because mm -hmm. they just want to know. They just, they're curious. And then, you and know what I'm saying? A, that's, that's a hard question, right? Because truthfully, that is the curiosity is the main goal, right? Like, the main form of... Um, Thank you, sir. Here go yours. Oh, thank you. Yeah, bring my shit back. Girl. <laughs> I think naturally they just curious, you know, and they don't even. So I can understand when, from a male standpoint, they be like, she, she, she don't mean shit to me or what, 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 because they mm -hmm. were just more so curious. They don't make it right, you know. Mm -hmm. um, that end, you got to think they get bored too because they used to, when we first start, when we first started, you got motherfuckers going all in because they both trying to really impress each other. Mm, yeah. And once they get content, it's like, yeah, nigga, I'm going to give you this 15% out of 100. Fuck it, take it and leave it. And then That's it true. makes, but they go both ways, though. Okay. The thing with y'all is females are way sneaky. They're very much more sharper, and they can get away with a lot more. And they will go to the grave without telling you the whole time you have no idea. So it go both ways because when a nigga not doing right by them physically, it make them get tired and frustrated to where they want to go do something different too. Mm -hmm. I but mean, see, I, I don't know. I feel like niggas will take you to the grave too. Y'all just be getting yeah. caught. Niggas, yes, get niggas caught. are not. That's niggas, what he's niggas, fucking y'all up. A nigga get, is not going to tell you. Hey, you got to catch his you ass. You right. Now, now, but, but the thing is, y'all don't even leave enough room for a nigga to catch y'all. Hell definitely. No. So you feel slick. like every time a girl cheat or every time she do something, she don't have no business doing is well thought out. I promise you, she is on her A game. She <laughs> is going and, and, and will probably be in the same room and you have no have fucking no idea. idea. I'll That's say why this. it hurt niggas' pride way yeah. more. When they find out. It's like you motherfucker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not speaking for all women. I can just speak for women that I know, and I can speak for a situation I was in. Mm -hmm. When women cheat, a lot of times they've been telling you, hey, this is going on now. You feel like they hey, fed this up. is going on. Women never like, oh, this is a fine ass nigga. I want to give him some pussy. Never. That's now, true. Now, it probably can for some women. I can honestly say every time I've been in a relationship, I ain't never been like, oh, damn, this nigga fine. I'm going to go cheat on my nigga. Niggas will see a bad bitch mm -hmm. and be like, I just want to see what she hitting for. But and if you she do going, know you can say, hey, a nigga fine. You may not move right then and there. But if that thought crossed your mind a couple more times, it may take, and y'all can go longer before, but you, it but definitely But the thing is happen. that nigga can only wear you down. Because I'm telling my man, hey, this is what I'm missing. Because one thing about women, we love consistency. We right. are consistent We want to be with one but nigga. You, you we, if my nigga said, would act right, I would not be outside. Look, you didn't hear what I said? The thing is, when you're only getting 15% out of 100, and it's like, hey, take it and leave it, that leave the room for y'all to go elsewhere. That Because it ain't going to be no consistency there right. at that point. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? I agree. I feel like when men cheat, though, it's because, like I said, they want to. They just want to try it. They they probably will never talk to that girl again. They probably she was probably dunk conversation whack. He he don't even want her. He just curious. And I'm a, I'm gonna give y'all y'all card because I'm I'm just transparent, you know. 
And I'm I'm always gonna root for the niggas. I'm a nigga. But y'all take it a lot better when y'all find out y'all been cheated Ooh, on yes. than a nigga would ever take it. Facts. That's true. Niggas be ready to fuck some shit up. That nigga that, fuck some shit up. That, that niggas word. be ready to fuck <laughs> some <laughs> shit up if they found out. have been started yes. behind pussy. Hey, no lie. Niggas will Real die. Rules. Niggas have died behind, behind pussy. pussy. <laughs> fact. Oh, okay? God, that no. is a fact. Literally. Yep. It, gets, it, it gets crazy out here, okay? But I feel like it's because what's expected Expected of men, like we just expect them. Okay, you know what? This is when I knew I was crazy. This was in my twenties. I was one of them girls that felt like, okay, what was that song? He's mine. You made a handle once, but I got him all the time. Oh, you thought if he cheated once, it's, I was like, okay. okay, he fucked you once, but he he at home with me. He mine. No, yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy as a fuck. But yeah. it's like they is made it? it normal. I no, I don't be like one thing is about it? me. I don't play that <laughs> shit. It's strict over here. So, okay, so the, if if a nigga, did, but let's I be have real. found out before that a nigga was like. Fucking with bitches. But mm -hmm. did you, well, do you be ready to fight at the end of the day? I don't know. I'm not fighting over no nigga ever. I ain't never no, in my don't, life. Did don't that. say never because you never, it, it depends on what nigga you get crazy behind. Look, let me tell you, the craziest that I was was in my 20s. I don't think I can get more crazier than that. And if I didn't fight over no nigga then, I do not see it happening now. I'm going to mm. just walk away. Like, nobody can make me that crazy. My peace is not worth. Mm -hmm. My peace is not worth somebody that, it was, that would disturb me. Because, like, if you would do some shit to disturb my peace, like, why I'm going to fight over you? Because if you knew that you only wanted to fuck with this girl one time or two times or whatever the case may be, why is that worth jeopardizing what we got? I always say that niggas get too comfortable with risking me. Yeah. I'm if not you gonna willing lie to, to risk me, I'm not going to lie. I'm not a perfect woman. I'm not a perfect woman, but I do feel like... I really give my all and I yeah. really, and it's like, I like to work through things. I like to communicate. So if you're okay with risking that, that's on you. So mm -hmm. if you want to risk that, I'm gone. Now, okay. Omi would have been like, uh-uh, he loved me, girl. But now it's strict in this motherfucker. Yeah. You I see it in the eyes, though. Trey. Look, I, man, I ain't telling y'all what you're saying is wrong at all. I got you. I'm here. All right now. So y'all single or taken? I am single. I'm single. I'm saking. <laughs> you, that sound you said saking is crazy. What the fuck is that? <laughs> saking is crazy. What is that? A situation ship? Single and taking at the same time. I don't know. Get, get, elaborate. <laughs> saking uh, is wild. I, I thought I just, I thought I was the only one who caught it. I'm like, <laughs> that sounds like an S instead of a T, but go ahead. So give me an example of what that I is. I made a mom a word. <laughs> Because, I mean, it does it does perfectly explain it. I, I, but elaborate, because I'm listening. Okay, so, like, you know, I'm in a situation where, like, me and my man is not really, like, together right now. We was, but now we not. But he still kind of, like, you know, take care of me. Like, he okay. do everything. And so I feel like I don't deal with other niggas for real because I'm still dating him and we still spend time and stuff together but I think we're just trying to figure out whether or not we think it could work as a relationship between the two of us and from what he tells me <coughs> he ain't dating no other girls but I don't you know I know how niggas be mm -hmm. I don't necessarily believe that jury still nigga out says saking. yeah I'm faking I like that I like that it's a little yeah. complicated but Okay, so now it's time to I'm get using that into shit. Yeah, the box. That's what usually, when somebody the asks you, I'm saking. Ow, ow, about, about. I'm she sorry, I'm enjoying my glasses. Yeah, she yeah. always in her own world. I do. I got my glasses she on. Be. I'm a little tipsy. <coughs> I'm feeling myself. Y'all feel me? Y'all feel me? Okay. Fuck y'all then. So what's your bop licks? My bop of the week, this song came out, you know, a little second ago. It's still technically new, though. But uh, Megan came out with Cobra. And you know what? I love it because I feel like <laughs> everybody wants to complain about uh, the girls. They only doing pussy raps. They only doing X, Y, Z. And she was really honest and real. She talked about her depression. She talked about wanting to commit suicide and how she, you know, made, made it through that. And it was so crazy because the song is called Cobra. In the video, she was like shedding you know her skin and it was a beautiful visual but people were still in the comments not getting it 
Mm-hmm. I seen somebody was like, how are you rapping about you miss your parents and you're naked? I'm like, are y'all stupid? I really think people, I hate to say this because I don't like calling people stupid, but I was like, I really feel like the comments I saw, it was just so disheartening because it's like, damn, how can a person really bear their soul in this song and really giving you themselves and y'all still are choosing to miss miss the point? But um, shout out to Megan, you know, dealing with depression and feeling the way she felt mm-hmm. and then making it on the other side because there's lots of people who didn't make it to the other side. There's a lot of people who are not here with us today. And so I'm glad that she is fighting and she's still working and, you know, that we still have her here to enjoy her artistry. She's an amazing artist. So, yeah, I fuck with it. Meg, The Stallion, Cobra, that's my bop of the week. Mm-hmm. Okay. I my bop of the week is Tim's Me and You. Mm, I love that song. One. It makes me want to be on a beach somewhere Tim's on a little island vacation. vacation. Mm. She really do make vacation music, and it's just like a feel good song. I feel like it's one of those songs you wake up in the morning, you could play it while you getting ready, while you taking your shower, getting ready to go to the gym, doing your makeup. Yeah, just a feel good, nice little song. Okay, make you want to be in love. Shout out, Tim's is beautiful too. Yeah, she is. She's she is very, very beautiful. beautiful. Try what you been listening to. No, honestly, Try. probably stuck in motion right now. That's all the fuck I get to hear because uh, from the time I wake up to go to sleep, I'm doing press and if it ain't that videos, performance. So I'm mm. right now I'm stuck on stuck in motion right now. But uh, I love all type of music, man. Um, I think my favorite, well, my favorite type of music is when I'm just rolling and I'm listening to the 80s and 90s R&B. Okay. Like the high fives, the, you know, the different stuff like that. Teddy Pendergrast? Yeah. Uh, I'll say Gap Band for Teddy. Okay, all right, all right, all right. That's because we love the 80s and 90s R&B. We do, we do. We love Okay, so. I definitely feel like I want a coldest playlist for sure. You got who? You gonna have you to share it with us. Yeah, yeah, you gotta share it with us. We love that 80s to, and 90s vibe. Mm-hmm. I gotta figure out how to share the playlist. But um, yeah, okay. I'll just, yeah. Okay. <laughs> we, okay, so who is an artist out like right now, like a new artist that you would like to work with, that you like haven't worked with? I've damn near worked with everybody. I knew you was gonna say that. I, I really have. Okay. Um, man, that's a hard one. Like, I, I got over 2,000 unreleased records. I have records with everybody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, like, of the like the new the new kids? Everybody. everybody. It ain't really much. It's probably a handful of them. And you, so what I tell people is I have real relationships with people, so it doesn't, a lot of the times it don't even really be about music. The music mm-hmm. is the bonus. Right. So even if I if it's a handful that I haven't physically laid a track with, it's probably already there anyway, just based on our relationship right. this one is time. But um I don't think, you know, unless it's some some youngsters that I'm just not familiar with. Right, yet. got you. And I'm one of the ones that I'm one of the few of our time that embrace everybody. Mm-hmm. You know. It's like damn that like I'm a gateway because even with the the youngest, they first thing is, man, I gotta get some with OG. You see what I'm saying? And then Every time I watch them start to elevate. And it's been that way for the test of time. Right. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. I'll, I'll let you slide with that one. I, it's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we're going to get into our favorite segment of the week. If you want your question answered on the show, make sure you email us at ask. Poorminds at gmail.com. If you're a Patreon member, make sure y'all put that in the heading. And let me tell y'all something right now about our Patreon. We about to revamp our Patreon again. Shay, Shay is our social media manager. Y'all listen, we about... So if you are not subscribed to our Patreon, I promise you, you're going to want to get on that right now. That? It's getting real good and Patreon. real juicy, okay? Oh, Patreon is like where people pay for bonus content, extra episodes. It'd be a lot of people that be like, because Poor Minds drops every Friday. Mm-hmm. Okay. And they like, I need more Poor Minds. So if you're one of those people who want more Poor Minds, 
Sign up for the Patreon. We drop an episode every week. Yeah. We're going to start doing extra bonus content. Like behind the scenes. Behind the, the scenes. Yes. Sometimes we post stuff from the live shows, mm-hmm. from the tours. Or we'll post like the whole live show because we don't post it anywhere else. So you can watch it on Patreon. Yes. Yeah, so go to patreon.com backslash poor minds. Yep. Tune in. Y'all okay. both hold in paragraphs. Well, mine, no. Mine is actually short. Oh, this you want to switch? Which I'm surprised. Her okay. shit is. I seen her. It like, is this a, it's actually not bad compared to the other stuff we've gotten. No, sometimes they a, be longer than that. Yeah. And we always ask, you know, that y'all keep it short. Keep that in mind. Question number one. Hey, Lex and Drea, I love y'all so much, but straight to my question. I'm planning to visit Houston for my birthday in February. I'm going with my man, my man, my man. And I wanted to know what are some food spots that are a must for my first time in Houston? Clubs, brunch, or day activities. Anything will be appreciative. Love y'all and keep going up. Thank you in advance. Well, I would tell y'all to go to Turkey Leg Hood. Okay, we don't no. know what's going to happen. All right. That, <laughs> but y'all ain't here that for Turkey Leg Hood going to be there. But go okay, ahead. now. <laughs> See, y'all know it's y'all, y'all in Houston. Y'all know it's, it's, it's getting messy. <laughs> Um, now, brunch spots that I like to go to. <laughs> Grace's is good. Great. I like Grace's. It's cool. It's cool if you want like a chill vibe. Yeah. Like if you want something chill. Okay. Um, what else? The Honey Hole. Y'all been there yet? No. I ain't been there. Need to go there. I still like Prospect. Definitely can go there. Prospect that is you are so good. At and I, mean, I don't Y'all got to get the truth truck. You know, my truck's not Okay, the day. truth truck. We got to come to the truth truck. What kind of food they got? Uh, you got the truth chicken sandwich, um, mm. chicken suya tacos, steak tacos, the um, elote corn. Oh, now a chicken suya lo- taco sound like he's busting. Okay, yeah. so we gonna check. But the chicken sandwich itself is gonna fuck the game. It is. Up. Yeah. Okay. Now what? What, what are the clubs now? Because I don't, I don't be going out. Well, in people Houston still no be more. going to like the address. Fifty fifty. Man, you know, Sunday. address have on Wednesday. They have probably one of their biggest nights. They do. The R and B nights. Mm. So now they bring an R and B artist every Wednesday. Yeah, oh, okay. that's what's up. Yeah, classic R and B artist, not just mm. the the new. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I like the old school ones. I feel like Sunday mm. Monday people Houston. be going to Sakai. Yeah, Sakai. Sakai that's on Saturdays or Fridays. A Friday, Saturdays, and Friday, Sundays Saturday. now. Mm-hmm. Okay, you got um, camp. Like, camp, yeah. camp, Sundays. Uh, Chapman and Kirby, fifty fifteen. Mm. Yeah, but you know what? Let me shout out this influencer. This is actually the perfect because she creates content in Houston and she always shows you the best places to go in Houston. Um, I started following her. I love her content. It's Searching High with Low. She's in Houston and she will show you everywhere all the nice um, restaurants to eat at. So go on Instagram, follow Searching High with Low, and she going to put you on all the good spots in Houston for real. For shout real. out oh, to her. And this is, I'm sorry. What you say? Yeah, I just say shout okay. out to her. I be feeling bad when I cut people off. Oh, you good. <laughs> okay. I ain't so, a diva, so you are right. <laughs> yeah. So it's also this dude that I follow on Twitter. His name is Eric Eats, HTX. Oh, yeah, I follow him too. And he always, y'all, he be posting all of the good spots in Houston to go eat at. Like food, I'm talking food trucks, hole in the walls, in the clubs, mm. in the big restaurants. Everything. So he like the dude. That, so I just learned about the dudes y'all got out here. Keith Lee? Oh, I, yeah. I just seen him for, I don't, and I seen him from the skits that the P, everybody that everybody been yeah. making lately. Yeah, yeah. yeah so well, Keith, Keith Lee is from Vegas, but he yeah, came out he here came and shook out Atlanta here. up. Yep. Oh, clearly. Oh my God, it was so crazy. with no expression yeah, on his face. He came out here and he tried all the restaurants and he had a lot to say. I mean, he he wouldn't lie. He wouldn't lie. He ain't tell a lie. The food out here is great. Like, we have good food. I feel like nobody got better food than Houston, though. Yeah. Yeah. But. And New Orleans. And New Orleans. Yeah. Louisiana. Yeah, my uh, bro, Larry Moreau got. Oh, that. We ate it all. Yep. Shout out to Big. Look, I called him Big Larry. Shout out to Big Larry. Larry Moreau. We ate at all his restaurants. We. Oh, she's Lord still talking about them gumbo pot stickers. Them little dumplings. We went to his oh, little yeah, Thai yeah, restaurant. We went to Morrow's. Mm-hmm. We went to what is it called? Monday. Mm-hmm. Something. Man, I had a time. Shout out to bro, Larry. Man. We don't have Shout Larry out. on the show. Yeah. 
Okay. I hope we gave you enough information. <laughs> Question number two. Hi, ladies. I've been listening for years now. Love, love, love your content. I have a dilemma, and I want to make sure this isn't all in my head. I'm turning 36 this year, and I feel like I'm too sexually inexperienced. I'm a single mom. I was with my son's dad from age 17 to 27. He was super vanilla, so we didn't do very much exploring in the bedroom. After our relationship, I ended... After the relationship ended, I didn't get much support from my family or his with my child. And since he had behavior problems, I couldn't keep consistent child care for anything other than work. I was very depressed for years because of this. Only one of my friends has children, so my friends were listening ears, but I never wanted to burden them with my child care issues. Now that my son is older, we're both in therapy. His behavior is better, and he's a teen now, so I can leave him home for short periods if I want to get out. I would like to date and find love again, but now I worry that my lack of experience will be a deterrent. Is this all in my head, or do men really not want an inexperienced partner? Thanks for your help. Um, y'all want to answer? Cause I got a good answer. I, got a I ain't answering answer that answer. shit. I'm listening to y'all. <laughs> okay, well, I'll well, I'll, I'll go first, man. I'll say this. I feel like when you are really dating somebody, it doesn't matter if you're extremely sexually experienced or not. Everybody has their different wants and needs in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. So whether you're experienced or not, a man that wants this and you want that, y'all gonna have to teach each other in the bedroom. Just because, you know, he likes it bent over that way and your leg up that way, that's not how he wants it. So no matter what, if you're experienced or not, you're always going to have to learn in the bedroom with your partner, period. I feel like everybody should be open-minded when it comes to sex. So you being sexually inexperienced shouldn't be a problem for a man who really fuck with you. Mm -hmm. Because as experienced as the next girl may be, she has to be open to learning what that man likes. Because there's people like, so, sometimes people feel like you can't teach an old dog new tricks. The best thing you can do in the bedroom is be open-minded. Mm -hmm. That's how I personally feel. And you don't need experience to be open-minded. I'm that open mind, whereas I definitely I'm debating on that because you know, like some people might be doing too motherfucking much. I mean, they might be, but that's you. That's for you to decide. I hear you. That open mind is a strong you, you, word. I knew you were strict, Trey. Right? I'm not strict at all. But you ever I'm had not your, extra. You ever had your little toes suck? Nah, hell no. Nah. You want your little toes suck? Your little nipple? Fuck no, my nipple What's wrong play with, with your little nipple. I don't. I, man, come on. You got. You got. Hey, you just imagine. What if she pinch you? Hey, hey, hey! Come, you come, come play with my nipple. You, you, you gonna be looking like, bro? What the fuck? No, wrong I'm with you? not. I'm be like, Ooh. I feel like some some niggas oh, like that. Man. They like a little nipple play. Don't do that because you might be telling on Saken right now. Ah! Oh no, I'm not telling on Saken. <laughs> okay, so let's stop oh, it. We... Yeah, no nipple play. No nipple play. At all. So you like no van... nothing play. Okay, so Shit. you like vanilla sex, which it's is fine. No, no, I am good at what I do. I'm, I know that that's I ain't right. Issue. Trey said, I ain't get this the truth for I, I am good at what I do. I'm not doing none of that extra shit, though. It's just not going to happen. Dog. I know. That's right. Okay, yeah. do y'all have any advice for her? I feel like you got good advice. I definitely think you have to be open-minded. Everybody doesn't like the same thing. So, what she, what one person might consider sexually inexperienced, another person might not even be into that. I was just going to say that because my thing is who gave... Who gave the terms right. of what that is? Because even if, what if you were super experienced, but the person you're dealing with is over extreme? No, what if they over extreme? So even oh. with your experience, it's <laughs> just like, still you ain't look. Doing shit. Yeah, yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah. Or you could be true. into a little nipple sucking and you may get in the bedroom and they don't like that. They might pop It's you a wrap right now, y'all. We're cutting right now. <laughs> Poor minds. <laughs> Everything you got going on, where they can uh, find you at, all that good stuff. The album stuck in motion out now. Um, Instagram is the only thing that I really deal with hands on, which is at Trey A B N T R A E A B N. Facebook, I don't know shit about, so whatever I post on Instagram, that's it finds it its way to Facebook. <laughs> um, TikTok. My kids showing me that. I don't okay, really know nothing about we that. still uh, bad with TikTok too. Don't mm -hmm. feel bad. X, it gets whatever I post on Instagram. But now you got real. I had Twitter so long, and you know you go to following some of the the, the baddest mm -hmm. women back then. Now 
I'd be scared to open it because it damn it look like a porn oh, website Twitter on crazy. Twitter. Twitter is crazy. Yeah, I don't even yeah, be calling so. it X. I still be calling it Twitter. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, crazy. Yeah. It should be called X for real. Yeah, no, because it's yeah. the three. Nigga time, do you open that shit at the wrong time? Oh it's my a rap. god! Every time me and Dre be at the bar like this, oh my god. <laughs> you be having to hurry up and start scrolling. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yes. it's crazy. Well, I had a ball yeah. today, Trey. I mean, I'm just thank cool, you man. so much for pulling yes, up on thank us. Thank you. Um, um, I, by this time, I think we got one show left, the yeah. Atlanta show. So y'all make sure y'all go to poorminds.com. We, we wrapping up the tour. Get your uh, tiki. Yeah, for Richard for Poor 2. Uh, make sure y'all go to musebeautycollection.com. That's Dre's website. Get your lip gloss. That's what I got on right now. Mm -hmm, um, what else? What else we got? I think that's it. Sign up for Patreon. And uh, thank you again, Trey. This oh, was cool. amazing. Yeah, so good. And we'll see y'all next week. Bye, y'all. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Lex T. And it's your girl, Dre and Nicole. And I got some really good news for y'all. Yes, period, y'all. We are about to revamp our whole Patreon. Yes. We got so much new shit coming soon for y'all. Like, we about to be doing challenges. We about to be doing vlogs. Mm -hmm. We really about to be dropping a lot of exclusive content for y'all. So, if one episode a week is not enough, y'all about to get some more content on Patreon. Yes, y'all be saying, oh, make the episodes longer. I need twice a week well this is your opportunity to see us twice a week and also you kind of get you're gonna get a look into our lives mm -hmm. and know us on a personal level mm -hmm. so make sure y'all sign up at patreon.com backslash poor mind sign up today there's different tiers so if you want audio only you can just listen if you want video and audio we have that too and also we have a top top tier where you get exclusive access to merch shows all that good mm -hmm. stuff so go to patreon.com backslash poor minds and sign up today but uh we introducing trade the truth and the truth notes period period because we finna eat this up we ready javi Let's go. Not ready. I'm ready. On a perfect day, I know, I know that, that I can count on you. you. When that's, that's not possible, possible, tell me, can you weather the storm? Because I need some somebody, somebody who will stand by. by. Come on. Yeah. Through the good times and bad times, you will always. What will she be? Always be right there. Give it to him. Sunny days. Everybody loves them. Tell me, baby, can you stand the Can you stand it? She don't care. Storms will come. This we know for sure. This we know for sure. Can you stand the rain? Ooh. Your love unconditional. I'm not asking much of you. Oh. <laughs> and girls, girls are make me laugh. laugh. I'll do whatever needs to be done. Oh, come on. Cause I need somebody who will stand by me. Sing it, Dre. When the <laughs> she won't run, she will always. Y'all ready for that? Always yep. be right there. Give it to him. Come on. Sunny days. Come on, Lexi. Your part. Everybody. Oh, her, I'll her beat part. like a motherfucker. Come on. Can you stand it? <laughs> Ooh. I know, I, I know. know. <laughs> Man, shout out to Try the Truth. That was a damn good karaoke. I don't care what you knew. We taking bookings right now. Make we sure y'all holler at us. Right. The truth the and truth, the truth notes. And the truth notes. We outside. Yeah, we ate that one little thing. We might be in Vegas, Coming too. to your city 2024. Period.